I've also worked in the Alphanet trips and patient community for uh, uh, many, many years. Um, Alphanet and trypsin deficiency is, is a disease that most people have not heard of. Many doctors are actually not familiar with it. It, it, it has a somewhat confusing name, but it's really not that rare. So alphanet antitrypsin deficiency uh, affects about one in 3,500 births. So that's about 100,000 Americans. So it's not exactly a one in a million disease or anything like that, but many people are, are misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. Liver problems run in my family and not with the, you know, the older generations didn't go to the doctor. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that they all had alpha-1 and a trypsin deficiency, not knowing it. My dad had a liver transplant when I was pregnant with Kendall. They didn't actually have him tested. Um, I have a cousin that should be my age, but she died from alpha-1 and a trypsin deficiency because her liver went bad before she was a year. And, like, it's on many levels for me, you know, most importantly for her, and then for the family and for everyone else. You know, it's such a great news. It's very important in those situations that the patients get together. They often do. So many diseases of that level of frequency have some kind of foundation or, or you know, patient uh, group. In alpha and trypsin deficiency, it's the Alpha-1 Foundation. Uh, the Alpha-1 Foundation started about 25 years ago, it was founded by three patients who were suffering from Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Uh, since, the, since that time, those three patients have passed away. But, Foundation was founded by patients for patients and is actually run by patients. The board of directors and the leadership of the foundation, 50% of them have to be patients to be involved with the foundation. So we have a very patient-centric focus in what we do and, and how we run our mission. The Alpha One Foundation has been a leader in advocacy, uh, education, newly diagnosed patients have a place to go. Since its inception, we have funded $90 million in research grants. Some of those grants have come to Dr. Techman and his uh, institution here, which we're really proud of and the work that he's doing. But it's essential, I think, in a rare disease community to have a foundation that's focused on that disease, that's a voice for patients who oftentimes don't have a voice for themselves. Uh, and we do a variety of programs from education to funding research to advocating in Washington, D.C. on behalf of uh, the 10,000 or so patients suffering from this disease currently.